I'm delighted to have Bobby Vassar on This Week in Virginia. Bobby is well known throughout the Commonwealth, not just in Hampton Roads, where he worked for Congressman Bobby Scott and just recently retired as chief counsel and legislative director for the Democratic U.S. Congressman Robert C. Scott. Uh, Bobby's a graduate of Norfolk State and has his law degree from the University of Virginia. But he's on the show today not to talk about uh, Bobby Scott, his good friend and my friend also, but to explain to us this vote that we have on the ballot with regards to a redistricting commission. So, Bobby, let me get you to jump right in and tell us about this uh, commission that, and, and tell us uh, your going to tell us why people should vote for it. So go go for it, sir. Thank you, David. And it's great to be back with you. I remember our days in the uh, 80s and 90s walking the halls of the General Assembly uh, together. Uh, yes. In the great booklet you put out to help us all know what we were, who we were talking to and what it was all about. So uh, still have fond memories. And I uh, have to say out front, uh, you mentioned my great friend and uh, mentor and champion, Bobby Scott, uh, and out of political fairness, I have to say he is on the other side of this issue. He's opposed to the amendment, uh, but we're friends and uh, know that we have uh, this difference. Uh, I think the amendment is crucial uh, as a step forward. You know that Many have worked on this issue for decades to get Virginia out of the morass we're in of constantly being in the courts over redistricting. I think it's clear to everybody now that the uh, current process just is not working and can't work. We're asking too much of our leaders, our legislative uh, uh, members uh, of the Congress and the uh, General Assembly in particular to do this business in a, a dispassionate manner. They can't look at it and not be concerned about how they're individually impacted. And I think as long as we have the General Assembly in charge of drawing uh, district lines, uh, we're going to have the difficulties back and forth. Nobody's evil or uh, mean, they just uh, uh, are human beings and it's uh, logical, natural for human beings to be concerned about something that impacts and affects them to the extent that this does. So we've uh, devolved into a situation where we have no longer have citizens electing their representatives, but we have their representatives electing citizens. And in terms of how they draw districts to corral the people they think most likely to vote for them into a district that they feel they would have a better chance to win. And so I think uh, everybody wants reform, even those who are opposed to the current amendment, but we have different ways of uh, how you get there. The bottom line is that to impact the current redistricting, the 2021 redistricting that every state has to do by uh, the Constitution, the only way we can change it from the difficulty of having partisan legislative control of it is if we pass this amendment. If we want to make further improvements and refinements down the road, I'm all for it. We started out, I served on the One Virginia 2021 uh, effort to uh, draw a constitutional amendment to redraw the lines by a uh, commission. And we had a proposal that just had citizens, but the legislature in this wisdom decided that uh, the legislators should still have a role. And what they chose was a equally bipartisan process of eight legislators, four Democrats, four Republicans, eight citizens, four chosen by Republicans, four chosen by Democrats, to do the, the line drawing. Uh, but the difference here is not only it's not legislatively controlled where the legislators are tempted to look out for their interests and their parties uh, as individuals and as party members, but uh, it is also a totally open and transparent process where 
citizens will see what's happening. For the first time in Virginia's history, there is a provision that uh, would uh, guarantee protection of uh, minority rights. Uh, ethnic and racial minorities are protected in the Constitution. We incorporate the uh, federal equal rights uh, amendment uh, protect or in equal rights uh, uh, amendment protections plus the Voting Rights uh, Act. But as you know, the Voting Rights Act is under siege and could very well uh, disappear or be so ineffective as to not really be uh, that helpful to us. So having this provision in the Virginia Constitution alone justifies this amendment uh, uh, for me. And for anybody who says it doesn't protect minority rights, they just are wrong, they can't read. It says where practical, districts shall be drawn to uh, allow uh, ethnic and racial minorities an opportunity to elect representatives of their choice. So nothing has ever been in our law before like that and it, and it will be now. Uh, the amendment also provides for bipartisan uh, efforts and uh, it even if uh, the amendment, the commission does not uh, arrive at a conclusion because it requires super majorities so that uh, everybody has to work hard to agree. But if it doesn't come up with a plan that uh, is supported by a super majority of delegates, has to be Republicans, has to be Democrats, uh, commission members, then it is uh, referred to the state Supreme Court where through enabling legislation that's pending and will be sure to pass, the court then will uh, elect uh, or select uh, two magistrates, one provided by, uh, uh, one selected from a list provided by Democrats and one selected from a list provided by Republicans to draw the lines. These will be map drawing professionals that will get this job done. So this process will greatly improve over the process. We just, I just saw a sign where, I mean, um, Notice that Virginia paid $4 million in legal fees for just the last episode of being in the courts over uh, redistricting where we had to challenge the racial makeups of the districts and other issues that keep coming back uh, time and time again that this process will set uh, free. Partisan gerrymandering, it's what it's called, and if you have legislative control uh, of redistricting continued, then you've got partisan gerrymandered, gerry, gerrymandering as the potential. And that's the problem with the current system. Let's make these improvements for this time, 2021. And if uh, there are those who want to work for further improvements for 2031, I'm all for it, like an all citizens commission, that we still want to do that, even though the legislature has not elected to do that so far. And we're gonna have the same legislature coming in January that we had this past January. So all those who are opposed to this had every chance and did put their proposals before that legislature and they were not accepted. So why they think now we're gonna get them to accept it, I, I don't know, but I think we should take the great gains that we have in the amendment by passing it. And then if we want to do something further, we can look to that for 2031, but that, that's why I think we should support this amendment because it's a great improvement over where we are now. And all the polling has reflected that overwhelmingly Virginians see this as the way to go. Well, Bobby, you certainly make a great case, case for it. And uh, on the day that we're having this conversation here, I see where the Washington Post has editorialized, uh, encouraging people to support it, saying it's not perfect but it's better than what, what we have right now. You, you have, in your uh, defense of it, you certainly have spoken to the, what some consider the weaknesses in it, and, and have given the answers to that, the, the minority representation, the, the Supreme Court issue, which uh, those, I think, have been the areas where there's been most 
not just heartburn, but but opposition that's developed on those two issues. Yeah, David, but I, I think if you look at it closely, you have to question what that really reflects, because here is what it says. If you're, there'll be two members from the Democratic side, two from the Republican side from each chamber. So if you're on the commission as the two representatives of the Democrats say from the House, and there's a plan that you feel is unfair to the Democratic members, then those two members can have it uh, drawn by the Supreme Court by professionals. What's wrong with that? Isn't that the case? Because if it goes to a general assembly that has the opposite party in control, they can then approve the plan without uh, ever having the scrutiny that uh, Supreme Court uh, uh, and magistrates that are uh, bipartisan would bring to it. So it's a protection mechanism for the minority. Why that's not uh, seen as such, I don't understand. First, you have to have a supermajority. And then, yes, if uh, two members of the same chamber and the same party say, no, then it goes to the professionals to draw. So I, I'm i not sure that's a, a weakness. I think that's a strength. Well, Bobby, we certainly very much appreciate your being on. We'll have someone come on in a few minutes and, and talk about uh, the other side, but it's, it's, not, it's on the ballot and people shouldn't yes. ignore it. There are two constitutional amendments. I think the other one has no controversy about it at all. But this one is the first one on the ballot when you come to constitutional amendments. And we want to make sure that people cast their vote on that. So thank you very much. Thank you, David. Appreciate your interest. Good afternoon, um, David, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, engage with you today. I'm La Charisse Aird, and I have the great pleasure of representing the 63rd District, as you know, um, which is sort of the Central Virginia Tri-Cities area. Uh, today, I'm hopeful to talk with you about the constitutional amendment that will appear um, on the ballot for the November election, and to make sure that folks have an understanding about why I I and many others are asking them to please vote no. Um, in 2019, I experienced having my district struck down due to racial gerrymandering. And after that decision occurred, legislators uh, had the first opportunity to redraw those lines. And I must say that that experience is what has driven me to have great clarity on my position of opposition to the constitutional amendment. And that primary reason is because I saw firsthand that legislators just innately cannot remove the bias that exists when drawing the lines for the districts uh, for the General Assembly. And that's coming from a legislator myself. I strongly believe that voters should be picking their legislators and not the other way around. The way this constitutional amendment is currently structured, it allows for legislators to control the process from start to finish, which means while this constitutional amendment would develop a commission, the commission is not nonpartisan, nor is it independent. Legislators would choose each of the legislators that participate on the commission, legislators would choose the citizens that would participate on the commission. And there is no language that says who these legislators can select. Should that be from a gender standpoint, a geographic standpoint, and most importantly, from a racial or ethnic standpoint, there is nothing that says how legislators should select those citizen members. In addition, legislators have selected the members of the Supreme Court that if two members of the same party decide they are in disagreement with these maps, the map process would be then kicked to those uh, legislative selected judges. So from start to finish, legislators are, con are still controlling the map drawing process. And I'll just also mention that 
Um, as we look around us and we see some of the efforts that are being made to ensure a balanced approach is taken to policy developments and in just uh, the direction that the Commonwealth is going in overall. Uh, we are trying really hard to be fully aware of racial sensitivities. I believe that this constitutional amendment would negatively impact black and brown communities, especially in the map drawing process. Not only does this constitutional amendment fail to even reference a representation on the commission from black and brown communities, the language uh, and the fine print, it does not require that um, the communities of interest that are uh, innate with black and brown representation be considered in the map drawing process. And lastly, I will just say that one of the things that I'm most proud of is during the 2020 legislative session, we passed House Bill 1255. House Bill 1255 made it illegal to racially, politically, or prison gerrymander here in the, in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And we have been acknowledged uh, throughout the country for making this tremendous step forward. If this constitutional amendment passed, because it is the constitution, it will trump that state law that we just passed that does not have the same protections. So I'll say it in a different way. Right now, this constitutional amendment does not outlaw political, racial, or prison gerrymandering. And it would not uh, be applicable to the state law that just passed because it trumps such law if we pass this constitutional amendment. So I believe strongly that legislators should not control this process. I believe we should have clear stated protections for black and brown communities. And I believe that the efforts that we took to um, eliminate uh, prison uh, and um, political and racial gerrymandering should stand as we did during the 2020 session. So, so Delegate Aird, I know that uh, any number of the editorials that have come out, here's a recent one from the Washington Post, uh, acknowledges it's not perfect, but claims that it's better than what it was. You've laid out the arguments very, very succinctly, but how would you answer those who might say, well, it's not all that doesn't have all the protections, but it's better than what, what we have. What's your answer on that? Thank you so much, David. I am a strong believer that if we are going to tinker with the constitution, it absolutely needs to be perfect. Um, when you put something in the constitution, that is forever. It is permanent. There is no history uh, in our commonwealth of being able to put something in our constitution and then being able to remove it. So for me, uh, that is the main reason why I don't think we should just place a compromise in our constitution for the sake of doing something or moving in the right direction. Uh, I believe that we need to be absolutely certain about anything that we place in our constitution. And second, I would just say that black and brown communities are still trying to clean up, uh, you know, lacking policy for the sake of trying to compromise and or move in the right direction. We don't need to add to the list of things that we need to come back and revisit. Uh, we need to make sure that we are being deliberate about uh, considering the needs in black and brown communities, which ultimately equates to the level of representation uh, that would exist, which is directly impacted by this constitutional amendment. Uh, and lastly, I will just say that we don't have to rush to put something in the constitution that is inadequate. With the legislation that we passed during this past session, we are prohibited from gerrymandering in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So we can fall back on this legislation, uh, proceed with the redistricting process for this cycle, and then start anew with a constitutional amendment that does have the guardrails and protections that we would so desire. And that would be perfect to place in perpetuity in the constitution. You know, as I listened to the debate that took place back during the regular session, which seems like a long time ago now that in this, in this special session, 
I know there, there was concerns that were raised about the Supreme state Supreme Court being the, the one that might end up drawing the districts since it doesn't take that much of an objection from legislative members to, to toss it right to the Supreme Court. Um, I know that you favor having the amendment not pass at all, but what about this particular provision? Should it pass uh, that would have the Supreme Court being the one that would make the final decision? You know, David, I have the utmost respect for our Supreme Court uh, in here in Virginia, but I must say that I, I still have some level of anxiety around uh, legislators appointing the judges. So ultimately, those members that were placed there were done so uh, by the hand of legislators. And as far as I'm concerned, there's some concern about that. Um, I will also go back and say that I truly believe that this is a process where voters should be in control. Citizens should be drawing these maps and citizens, they know what the needs of their communities are. Uh, they have the pulse of uh, being able to represent issues of importance uh, that goes directly into representation. And so this should not be a process that can easily uh, be kicked over to the Supreme Court. It really needs to be in the hands of voters. You know, uh, one other thing I'd like to ask you about, there was um, a lawsuit that was brought, which I think is, uh, has been settled saying the language on the ballot was such and the explanation that as I would read it and as the average Virginian would read it, if you take the time to read it, there's a lot of explanation that it somewhat encourages someone to vote yes. Do you have any concern about the language and the explanation of the amendment? That's one thing I didn't and I did not get into, but David, you're absolutely right. The language on the ballot is very misleading. You know, when most members and even with recent polling that was conducted here in the Commonwealth, almost everyone is in favor of prohibiting gerrymandering. Everyone wants to get rid of the current and existing redistricting process. But the way the language appears on the ballot, it would make you think that it is doing that and more. And it just absolutely isn't. It's unfortunate because during this past legislative session, there was significant debate about the language that would appear on the ballot. And there were people who deliberately picked out certain key words to frame the way this language appears on the ballot. And it is manipulative and it's very much misleading. Uh, and it's, it's hard because every person is not gonna have the time to go and read a 1000 plus word a full amendment. They're only going to, you know, see that language as it appears on the ballot, which is, if I recall correctly, only about a hundred or so words. Uh, so there's a lot of fine print that is being left out. And I would just tell people once again that this constitutional amendment, it's not what Virginians want. It's not an independent commission that is nonpartisan. Uh, and, and, and really truly represents uh, a fair process that's citizen-led. That's just not what we have in this regard. Delegate Aaron, I wanna thank you so much for being on this week in Virginia, uh, representing Petersburg, Dinwiddie, and a part of Chesterfield since 2016, Virginia State graduate and honored by your institution with a, a doctorate and that uh, if I might say at a young age, to be honored by your institution with a doctorate, that's it's certainly a, a Is, high credits to you. <laughs> and, and so we, we thank you very much and encourage people to give this careful consideration. People are voting early and, and to make sure they understand the issue. So thank you very much. Thank you, David. And if I might just say in closing, and I make myself available if anyone has additional questions, uh, there is a lot of technical language that I did not get into, but I'm happy to talk anyone uh, through the amendment and discuss further. Thank you. Thank you. We'll send them your way. Thank you. Thank you.